Good morning, my friends. I hope you're doing great this morning. I hope you're doing really well. I am. I had a, I had a very fresh wake up this morning. Yo, man, I'm telling you, it's it's been the same happened yesterday. Even though somewhere throughout the night I woke up and yeah, I, uh, as I was busy getting ready this morning, I thought about a certain quick little video clip that I saw yesterday came across my mind and. It's actually a question that I've had a few times throughout my life and it popped up again once recently and that is somebody asked me why do I love God why do I live for Jesus why do I run so passionately for him the answer is actually very very simple and that's just for me to say because I love him <laughs> But that would make for a very short video if I ended it there, right? To give you some insight into the whys, it goes a lot deeper than just because I love him. You don't love something out of nowhere. Number one, you, you can't even really know what love is until you find the love of God, because God is love. And if you do not have God, you can't have love. The Bible actually also says that Jesus teaches us that. And that... Uh, I can't tell you how much more I know this now than I used to. And I mean, I've had my ups and downs in life. I've had my fair share of being everywhere in the world. But I'll tell you, I, I, never, I never knew love like I know and understand it now. I shouldn't have been around to be number one. The number one reason I shouldn't have been here today. There are quite a few times in my life where I should have been dead. I got some very big illnesses as a baby. There were times as a kid where I'm thinking now of once where <laughs> a very idiot young child ran a stop street on his bicycle and a car nearly hit him at a very, very good speed. It was close, man. I'll tell you, it's whew, it was so close that this lady who was driving had, um, I remember seeing a kid in the car. This is many years ago. Like, I, I don't know how old I was. I can't remember. Seven or ten or somewhere around there. They followed me to the house and then stopped me and go, hey, listen, um, you know. And as a kid, you're scared because it was just a groot mens now scaling me. So, you know, and today I realize, you know, that was an incident where, again, I could have, been dead. My neighbor's dog that nearly killed me. Uh, yeah, there were instances where God used injuries in my, on my body. I shared once about me injuring my ankle during a cricket practice and I got upset with God for not being able to play a cricket game. Yet in the car I would have been in that same weekend where I would have sat in the accident that happened. Uh, I, I would have not been around anymore and a great many other times in my life where I, I firmly believe God made sure that I'm still here. I'll tell you the one of the other whys is, you know, when you think your life is in order, you do everything to get life better. The fake happiness is exactly that, my friends. It's fake happiness. I partied up a storm. I drank a lot. I had all the sort of lifestyles. And you know where I'm sitting now? Since God freed me from all of that stuff, and I'm not say, sitting here telling you that drinking is wrong and all that thing. That's for your own conviction still at the end of the day. It was wrong for me. Because if you're under the influence of alcohol, number one, I can't think straight. I don't know about you. If we could think straight, then I would think you wouldn't have all these drunk stories of your life. I know I most certainly won't. And things, I'll tell you, shame is the biggest word that comes to mind if I used to think of my drinking days. And praise God, he freed me from the hold that alcohol had on me. I love God because of where he came to fetch me. About the space in my life where he came to dig me out of the hole that I threw myself into. Not him. And I'm grateful for the fact that he did because I wouldn't know where my life would be today. If he didn't do that. I don't know. I don't even know if I would have still had a life if he didn't do that. But God had another plan. I don't want to tell you. Sorry. I want to tell you in the same way that God's got a plan for you. If you're still around, if you still get to sit there and watch a little bit of this, 
But God still has a plan and a purpose for your life, my friend. You know, there are a few verses that stick out that just demonstrates everywhere. But as soon as, and I want you, I actually want to tell you if you want to go check it out. Let me actually quickly have a quick look. What did I? I actually wanted to Google something because I can't. Remember. And I just somehow I just typed in, "What does the Bible say about loving God?" That's that's what I searched, right? And and the first verses that it kicked out was John three sixteen, Romans five, one John four. And to tell you what these are saying, John three sixteen, the most famous verse in the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. So you ask, ask Google about loving God, and it gives you the greatest act of love toward us. That's some, but that's what love means. It means you don't find out how to how, how to love Him. It's just knowing how much He loved you. That's how you understand that God is love. Romans chapter five says that but God in verse 8 it says but God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were still sinners Christ died for us I love God because he loved me first and I and I started digging into that love and I started feeling a piece of that love that moment you take a chance and listen to your friend and go visit his church and you sit in that church and listen to that message and get that worship music coming through and the ministry of the Holy Spirit starts happening and you feel a stirring in your heart. That is God saying to you, I love you. Come to me. I've got all this great love that I want to share with you. But God will can only physically, you, you're only going to feel it once you're allowed to open up. If you haven't opened up to God yet, it's not that He doesn't love you. He still loves you already. He's loved you a long time ago already. Is it in Jeremiah that He said, in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, I think it said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and set you apart. Before He formed you. Now, Jeremiah was over 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so that's why I love God. 1 John 4 says, we love him because he first loved us. And 1 John 4 as well, that was verse 19, verse 8 says, He who does not love God, he who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And that's why I never knew what love was, because if you don't know God, his love is just a word. And a fake feeling and emotion around it. Remember, the enemy is very good at hiding these things and, and giving fakeness and make you believe these things are fake. If your life is terrible and you drink to get rid of the terribleness, that the problem with that is, because I was there, the problem with that was it only helps temporarily because it switches off your mind a little bit. Once I allowed God in, man, you can't ask me if I'm well off. Because if you're going to expect a worldly answer, you're not going to get one. Because I'll always tell you I'm great. Are there things I want and things I think I need in my life? Absolutely. But do I have everything I need? Yes, more than yes, because God looks after me. But I don't love Him and live for Him because of what He gives me. I do it because I'm thankful, because I'm grateful, because I'm trying to show Him. There's no act that can get into God's good books. He loves you already. Love is free. His love, His salvation is free. All you need to do is make a choice. But I'm sharing this today just to testify that you might not know much about my life, where I've been, where I've come from. Even the people who do, I still have ones today that question me saying, sitting here saying stuff and talking like this. I sometimes look myself in the mirror and go, sure, brah, look at you. <laughs> Is this you? And that's not the enemy attacking me. That's just me thinking from an unbelievable point of view and perspective of where God has brought me from, where I used to be and where I am now. And I want people to feel this way. I want you to sit in the midst of what you think is the most chaotic space in your life. And I want you to know you can have complete peace, complete contentment. You can be happy and joyful in that space. Because that's how God works. Because you realize that your life isn't yours and the stuff that's going on around you isn't yours. It's not your battle. The battle belongs to God. He will take care of it and He's always in control. But we need to grow and we need to learn for our purpose and our calling. And that's why these things occur. He doesn't make them happen. No, that's the devil that makes the bad stuff happen. But God uses it for his good because that's how brilliant he is. He will make all things work for the good of those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. So if you don't yet, you might want to give it a shot.